Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we will go through step 10 of the SAP UI5 walkthrough series. And uh, we will discuss about descriptor for applications. Now in the previous step, we introduced the concept of components and uh, we introduced component configuration in our sample SAP UI5 application. In this step, we will segregate all the application specific configuration settings in a separate file. And that separate file is called the app descriptor file. And it is also called as the manifest.json file. This basically separates the application coding from the configuration settings and makes our app even more flexible. Now to understand all the SAP Fiori applications, they are basically realized as components. Every application is, you can say in itself is a component and it comes with a descriptor file, which is the manifest.json file. And this descriptor files helps our component to be hosted on the Fiori launchpad. The SAP Fiori launchpad, it acts as an application container and it instantiates the application without having a local HTML file. For bootstrapping purpose, instead it uses a descriptor file, which is the manifest.json file. And the component is loaded into the current HTML page. This basically allows several applications to be displayed in the same context. Each application can have its own local settings such as language properties or devices supported and uh, furthermore. From the look and feel point of view, there are no changes in our application. We'll still have an input field and a description displaying the value of that input field. So there are no visual changes in our application, but we will introduce a new file called manifest.json file, which is the descriptor file for our application. Now this is the manifest.json file, which we'll introduce in our application. You can see it here. It has different properties like sap.app, sap.ui, sap.ui5. And we will understand what these properties mean in our manifest.json file. This manifest.json file, it is a configuration object and it is always in a JSON format. It contains all the application settings and parameters which are defined as at a global level for the application. This file is stored in the web app folder and it is read by SAP UI5 to instantiate our component. Basically this manifest.json file contains the configuration properties of our component. Now, as we can see, there are three important sections defined by the namespace in the manifest.json file. First one is sap.app. We can see sap.app section here. This particular section has some application specific attributes. One is ID, which is basically the namespace of our application component. So you can see in the ID, we have to pass the namespace of our application component, which is basically the namespace of our application. In the type property, we specify application because this app descriptor file is for our application. Then we also, we have a property for i18n where we specify the path of our i18n dot properties bundle. Then we have these uh, parameters for title, description, and the application version. The application version is to be used later on uh, when we have to update our application so that we can differentiate between different versions of our applications. So we maintain different versions in the manifest.json file itself. Now the sap.ui section, this section has the parameters to specify what technology we are using and uh, what device types are supported uh, for our UI5 application. Now we have sap.ui5 section. This section holds the information about the root view of our application. If you remember in the last step, the root view information we maintained in our component.js file in the last step for our application. But now the root view is maintained in the manifest.json file. Then we also maintain the dependencies for our application here in this section. So we mentioned what is the minimum UI5 version required and what all SAP UI5 libraries are needed for our application. 
we also define the models which are used in our application in this section itself. So here we are defining the I18N model. The models which we define in this section, they automatically get instantiated when our SAP UI5 application starts. Once we specify the models here, we need not to we need not to define or declare these models in any controller file or in our component.js file. Here we are defining the I18N model. Uh, we provide the type for that model, which is a resource model. And uh, in the settings, we provide the bundle name, uh, which is basically the path to our I18N bundle in the in our application uh, folder structure. Coming to the index.html file, now we declare our component in the body of our index.html. All right. First of all, in the bootstrap script, we enable support for component and uh, we introduce and for that we introduce this parameter here data sap ui on in it and we point this module to sap slash ui slash core slash component support once we have done that then we declare our component in the body section via this div tag here we again we provide the namespace for our component and other details so these are the two changes required in the index.html file. Now you can see that we are no longer uh, calling our index.js file upon the on init event from our index.html file. Now we have enabled the support for component and we have declared the component in the body section of uh, this index.html file. So whenever this on init event gets triggered, it will basically instantiate the component for our application. Then these are some of the changes in the i18n.properties file as uh, we have few additional texts to be displayed as the application title and app description. So that text also we update it in our i18n.properties file. Coming to the component.js file. Um, now in the component.js file, in the metadata section, we just provide a reference to our manifest.json file, which is our app descriptor file, which we have introduced. We no longer need to provide the details of our root view in the component.js file because that has been uh, maintained in the manifest.json file itself. So whatever metadata related properties and uh, configuration needed, that will be loaded from the manifest.json file. We also don't need to instantiate the i18n model because that also has been defined in our manifest.json file. We have just passed the reference to our app descriptor file and uh, the configuration in that file will automatically be loaded and read uh, once the component gets instantiated. So these are the code changes which are required for introducing the descriptor for our application. The most important point to note here is that now our SAP UI5 application is basically a component and uh, whatever application specific or component specific configuration has to be defined, that has been moved to the manifest.json file, which is our app descriptor file. And uh, whenever our SAP UI5 application is hosted on the Fury Launchpad as a Fury application, it is basically realized as a component. The Fury Launchpad basically acts as an application container and uh, it instantiates uh, the component without using any local index.html file. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. Um, now we have covered two important aspects of uh, SAP UI5 application development. One is component and one is application descriptor. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll go through step 11, which talks about pages and panels. Until then, thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.